Good morning. Today's daf Yomi is Yevamos daf daf Nun Zion, and we are going to start on Nun Vav Base at the Mishnah on the bottom of the page. But I also want to say at the outset, today's daf Yomi, the whole week is sponsored by Aviva and Mordechai Weissman in Lazech Nishmas, in memory of Dr. Philip Rodkin, Five Ochayim Ben Aviva Velaybel. So, today's mission on the bottom of 56B discusses the case of an almana with Kohen Gadol, a widow who marries a Kohen Gadol, she's not allowed to. So let's say she marries him, and now she says, we're talking about a scenario that she herself, this widow, was coming from a, a home where she was the daughter of a Kohen. So she had been able to eat the truma in her father's home, but now she participates in this marriage, which is not kosher. Or a Grush of a Chalutzel Kohen Hedrod, or a divorcee who marries a regular Kohen, which is also not allowed. So, Minha Erosin, if they were just betrothed, then Lo Yoko Betruma. And even from the moment where they're just betrothed, then, then he cannot, uh, she cannot eat from the Truma. Be, when she goes back to her father's home, because she has become disqualified by participating in this marriage, even though it's just betrothal. Whereas her Lezer and Shimon Machshirin, they say no, since she was just betrothed, she is able to eat from the Truma. This Armulo on this Garshu, let's say she became widowed or divorced, and in which case the person, the reason why. She's not able to eat from the truma, according to the Tanakama, just from the state of betrothal, because she's eventually going to come to marry this person. But let's say this now this, this husband of hers is widow, it becomes dies or becomes divorced. So therefore, Minamisu and Pesuos, that if she had been fully married to him, then they then she's going to be disqualified because she was fully married, and then she became disqualified. Qualified, but Mina Averson, but if she was just betrothed, then Kishiros, then she's going to be kosher. And what's the reason why she's kosher? Because even according to the position that says she's disqualified from the betrothal, that's only while they're alive because she's Mishdameris, she's waiting for a Bia Psula, she's, she's waiting for this disqualified Bia. But in this case, he's dead, so they're now dead, so there's no concern about that. So now we start to Gemara. The Gemara tells us, Tanya, I'm already mayor. The mayor says, what's the reason why if she's a widow or a divorcee betrothed to a regular Kohen or a widow to a Kohen Gadol, why even from the state of betrothal, do we say she's not allowed to eat the Truma? And, and Rabbi Meir has a very, there's a very strange logical argument which is put forward here. But uh, this is Rashi's, one of Rashi's explanations. And he says, the argument is, just like if it was a regular marriage, and a regular, even a Jew to a non-Jew, not a Kohen, you can't eat the Truma. Then for sure, in the marriage of Kedusha, for sure, she can in the Lach, the Makamach, her Tomar, the Kedusha, a bear, she can Excuse me. If it's going to be by kedusha as mishus in lachilin kedusha averu l'kol shekain. If by a regular marriage, you, where it's two non kohanim, you can't eat from the truma. For sure, in this case, where it is a sinful betrothal, the the widow to the kohen gadol, or the regular or the divorcee to the regular kohen, for sure they can't eat the truma. The Gemara says, "What are you talking about? This is a this is a faulty logic." In the Kedusha Rishus, these regular marriages, there's no place to even talk about Truma. Regular Jew and a Jewess, they can't eat Truma, only the Kohen can eat Truma. So how are you going to compare that to a Kohen, God or a Kohen, where if they weren't married in such a, a sinful marriage, they would be able to feed a woman the Truma. So now the Gemara, so the Gemara basically says we don't understand that Kava Homer. But anyway, the Gemara now moves on to a related discussion, and that is Sejer Belazar, Amar Belazar, Amar Mashayo, Patsua Daka Kohen, Shekidesh Bas Israel, Banu Machokas, Shebelazar, Remeh Belazar, Rabbi So now what are we talking about? We're talking about Patsua Daka. Patsua Daka is a Kohen who has a problem with his testicles, he's got crushed testicles. So Petsuodako, in this case, a Kohen, Petsuodako is somebody who has a crushed testicles. 
And in this case, he's a Kohen. Now, the law is about a Petua Daka, that he's not allowed to marry somebody from the Tahal. You're not allowed to marry a, a regular Jew because it's a prohibition from the Torah. But in this case, he's a Kohen, and he betrothes the daughter of a regular Jew. So that's a dispute between Rebbe and Rebbe Lezer. Presumably, the Gemara means to say that Lui Rebbe Meir, the Aram Mishtameris, would be a Psua, uh, Mr. Maris will be a psua, then dear right, so low, uh, so, uh, so according to Rabbi Mayer, that a woman who is Mr. Maris will be a psua, that a woman who is in Arison, even from a biblically prohibited marriage, like in this case, the, the crush test that calls the psua daka, then she can't even the truma, biblically speaking. And so, therefore, if it will be a case where it was a, a biblical case, she can't eat, eat from it, like in the case of the Kohen Gadol to the widow, where she can't eat from it. So, too, in this case, with the Petsua Daka and her, she's not going to be able to eat from the Truma. Hanami Loacha. Whereas with Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Shimon, the Amr Mishtameris would be a Petsua Diaraisa Acha. But according to Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Shimon would say that as if she's just in the Aris, it means just in the betrothal state, and she's waiting for the firm marriage, she can indeed eat from the Truma at that point. So in this case, too, Hanami, we're on top of 57A. In this case, too, we're at the Petsuadaka, should be allowed to eat from the Truma. Hanami, Acha. So the Gemara on top of 57A says, why do we think that these cases are the same? These cases are not the same. The crushed testicles and the, the Kohen who has the crushed testicles are not the same as the widow who marries the Kohen. I don't know why. Dilma Adkan will come and rebel as a Shimon Hassan, maybe in the case of the widow who marries the Kohen Gadol or the Kohen who marries the divorcee there, Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Shimon say she can't eat from the Truma because that case is different. Why Why does Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Shimon allow him to feed her Truma there? Because if they weren't marrying a divorcee, then the Kohen would be able to feed the person the Truma. But in our case, the Petsua Daka can't marry anyone. He's not going to be able to feed her the truma. I mean, there's no woman that's permitted to him. And so therefore, maybe here, Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Shimon would say that she can't, he can't feed her the truma. And if you say, wait, there is somebody with this man with the crushed testicles can marry. Who can he marry? Maybe he's allowed to marry the daughter of the converts because there's a dispute. We'll see that there's a three-way dispute in Kedushin whether or not a Kohen is allowed to marry a daughter of converts. We know today that Kohen is not allowed to marry a convert, but there is a position in the Gemara that he's not even allowed to marry the daughter of converts. Gemara says, Rabbi Yohan asked this exact question of Rabbi Yoshaya, and Rabbi Yoshaya didn't answer it. So the Gemara says, let's first go back and answer this question. Is, is, it this, is it a good analogy? Is it the same thing? Meaning to say, is the... Kohen was the Petsua Daka, do Rebbe Lezer Rebbe Shimon say that you could feed her the Truma? So the Gemara says, In Rabbi Amar, Ho Machila Belo Yada. Since he can feed her the Truma in the case of Lo Yada, what's his case? Rashi explains it. That if the Petsua, the man was married to his wife, Kohen was married to his wife, and then after he was married, the Kohen became a Petsua Daka. He got crushed testicles. So there, as long as he doesn't have more relations with her, he's allowed to feed her the truma, even though they're fully married. So, so we see from here that even though the Rebbe Shimon would say in a case of the Petsua Daka that you can feed her the truma, even though they're fully married. Just like there, in the case where he's not, where he's married to her, he can feed it her. So too in the case where he's betrothed. And Rabbi says, I'll give you a different reason why he can feed her. Because the Petsua Daka, if he has the Canaanite slaves, he's allowed to feed them the truma. So too, in this case, he's allowed to feed someone else. Uh, in this case, his, his betrothed wife, because, because <coughs> she's like his, uh, she, we see that he's capable of feeding the truma to the people who are members of his household. So Abai didn't want to give Rabbi's answer because Kenyan the issues, me Kenyan the issues, Yafina, and Lo Yafina, and Kenyan the issues, me Kenyan the Abana. Because Abai says, we learn how betrothal of Kenyan the issues, we learn how the betrothal of the issues, meaning 
to say uh, uh, acquisition of a relationship through marriage from another relationship of marriage, but not from loyal feeling. We don't want to compare it to slaves. We uh, we don't want to compare it to a case of slaves because the case of slaves is not comparable to the case of marriage. But Rabbi Omar Kabaye, Rabbi didn't want to say like Kabaye because he says. Shani also in the case of where he was married to her and then he got to crush testicles, that case was different, Shekvar Acha, because he had already allowed her to eat when he was fully married to her before, his, before he became damaged, before his, his testicles became damaged. And so therefore, since she had already started to eat the truma, therefore she could continue to eat the truma. So Abaya, Abaya doesn't draw that distinction. Shekvar Acha, Abaya doesn't say this distinction, oh, because she already started to eat, Therefore, she continued to eat. Abai says, we don't say that. Why don't we say that? I'll tell you why we don't say that, says Abai. The reason why we don't say that is because we already have this principle. Uh, because we have a, a regular Jew who marries a, a Kohen, umis, and then the Kohen dies. If you're, if, if you're saying that once she started to eat, she continued to eat, in that case, we should allow her to continue to truma. But we don't say that. We say that if she died, she was married to the Kohen, she could eat the truma while she's in his house. But once he dies, she has no children. She can't eat it anymore. And, and so therefore we see, we don't say this concept that once she starts to eat, she can eat. So the Rava, Rava say, no, that case is different. Also, Paco Kenyana, there she can't eat anymore because the marriage relationship is severed. But also, Paco Kenyana, but now here in this case, she's still married. And so therefore, once she starts to eat, she can, till, she can continue to eat. Says the Gemara, Gufa, we learned Gufa always means we learned earlier. By the name of Yochum and Rabbi Yoshaya. Rabbi Yochum asked this question for Rabbi Yoshaya. Petsua Daka Kohen, Shenasa Bas Gerim. So let's see, you have this Petsua Daka, who is a Kohen, this crushed testicles Kohen, and he married this daughter of converts. And we had said that this is that. Uh, is he going to be able to eat her, to feed her the Chuma? Maoshiach Luan the Chuma. Is he going to be able to feed her the Chuma? So Ishtik, so Rabbi Oshaya was quiet. He didn't say anything. So in the end, also Gava Rava Achrina, a different rabbi came along, great man, who bought me named Milsach. He asked him a different question. Who Pashalay? Rabbi Oshaya answered that question. Who's this other rabbi? Reish Lakish. You know, Rabbi Yohan and Reish Lakish were brothers in law. It didn't add. So this might have caused some tension because they had some tension later on in their life. And that was how Reish Lakish. Ray Shlokish uh, died from Rabbi Yochanan giving him like a harsh look. And, and they were, they had a frenemies because they had a tremendous, uh, tremendous closeness, but they also had some tension. So the Gemara says, I'm like Rabbi Yudin, I see Rabbi Shaya, I'm to Rabbi Yochanan, why are you answering Ray Shlokish's question? Rabbi Yochanan was also a great man. Um, no, so he said, the reason is, says Rabbi Shaya, the, and the reason why I didn't answer him is the Kabbalah, me named Milsa, the lay slave patri. He asked me a question, that's no answer. So Rashi says, he asked me a question, I don't know the answer. He asked me, he asked me the question, if a Petsua Daka Cohen with the crush testicles married a woman who's the daughter of converts, is he allowed to feed her the Truma? Now, there's a, there's a three-way position about whether or not a Cohen is allowed to marry the, Quran, the daughter of converts. That there's Rabbi Yehuda who says, so, so Rabbi Yehuda says uh, that if her father is a, if her father was a convert, even if just her father was a convert, then she, then he can't marry her. It's like he's marrying a halal. So, so he's not even allowed to marry her. So we're going to go through the position according to Rabbi Huda. Either Rabbi Huda, Bain B'Kedusha, Saikai, whether or not this Kohen with the cross chastikles retains his status as a Kohen, Bain Rab B'Kedusha, Saikai, whether he doesn't, lo acha. She's not going to be able to eat the truma. Why? I'll tell you why. If the Kohen retains his status and his holiness, well, she can't eat from the truma to Amar Mar because Rabbi Huda is the position. Basker Zahar Kabaz Kalal Zahar. She's not allowed to marry. She's not allowed to marry her. If he's not allowed to marry the offspring of, uh, of a convert. And, and if you marry such an offspring, she becomes disqualified to the Kahuna. Uh, and so, therefore, she becomes a uh, chaloa when he when he um, marries her. She's not allowed to eat from, from the truma. She becomes disqualified. And also, if the spitzuadaka does not retain his holiness as a kohen because of his medical condition, 
then we say, well, she also can eat it. Uh, because we say, uh, the Rabbi Yehuda is in the position that since she's uh, the offspring of converts, it's it, that, that even though she's the offspring of converts, she is still considered kahal, and so therefore she's not allowed to marry a regular Jew. And so therefore, we're, according to Rabbi Yehuda, for sure she can't eat the truma. Even Rabbi Yossi, or you say according to Rabbi Yossi, what's Rabbi Yossi's position? Rabbi Yossi's position is that the offspring of converts can marry the Kohen. And Rabbi Yossi's position is that the, the offspring of converts are not considered kahal, and therefore they can marry the Pitsuadaka. So both ways Rabbi Yossi would allow her to eat from the truma. As the Gemara says, you Rabbi Yossi, ben Kedusha Saikai, whether or not this Kohen retains the status of a Kohen or ben Lab Kedusha Saikai, whether he doesn't retain her, his status, Akha, she can continue to eat from the truma. Why? Big Kedusha Saikai, if he retains his status as a Kohen, Akha. She could eat the truma da amar because we learned kahal gerem will ikri kahal. Excuse me, I skipped one according to Rabbi Yossi. So according to Rabbi Yossi, bein bein b'kdusha say bein mulav kdusha kai achla b'kdusha say if the kohen retains the status as a kohen achla she can continue to eat the truma da amar because he said af ger shenasa giores pitok sherol kuna. He's of the position that the offspring, the Yossi's of the position, and even if the, both parents are converts, the offspring can marry a Kohen. And so therefore, she's allowed to marry the Kohen. And so therefore, he can feed her the Truma. And he loves And if this, he doesn't retain his status of a Kohen, she's still allowed to marry him. She's still allowed to eat the Truma. Because we say that. Rabbi Yossi's in the position that the offspring of converts are not called kahal, and so therefore there's no prohibition on them marrying into the community. So therefore, who is Rabbi Yochanan asking the question to? It's 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 obvious, but according to Rabbi Yossi, it's allowed, and according to Rabbi Uda, it's not allowed for a teacher to So it must be the Rabbi. It must be. And Rabbi Yochanan was asking, he was asking Rabbi Yoshai, according to the following Tana, which Tana? The Tana, the Tanam, Rabbi Waza ben Yaakov Omer, the Tana, the third Tana, the middle position in the, in the Mishnah Kedushin is the position of Rabbi Waza ben Yaakov, who says, Isha Baz Girim, Moti Nasa Lukuhuna, Acha Tehei, Imam Yisrael, that a woman who's the daughter of converts, cannot marry a Kohen unless her mother was, was born Jewish. So that's Rabbi Yossi's position, that if the mother's born Jewish, she can marry the Kohen. This is indeed the question. Do we say that uh, that 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 this this she has this extra status and therefore she can marry a kohen and but he doesn't but she doesn't have kedusha to be called a kahal and so therefore she's allowed to marry the petsuadaka so therefore she is not kedusha she does she's not called kahal but she does have kasherus that she's allowed to marry the Ko, the kohen and therefore mimonavshach she can eat it one way or the other she can eat it because if we say that she's in her kedusha. If you want to say he's a kohen, she's she's allowed to marry him, and we're not going to prohibit her because of Daka because she's not called kahal. So I mean to say she's the daughter of converts, but according to Rabbi Yossi, if her mother was her mother was born Jewish, according to Rabbi Ezra Shur, as long as her mother was born Jewish, she can marry. So therefore, that's the way. So let's read the Gemara now. Also coming by way, this is the question. Kesheris Mitasva, she's allowed to marry a Kohen because she has this extra Kesheris for Acha and she could eat it. Odoma Kedusha Mitasva, Loacha, or do we say no because she's allowed to marry? She's also no longer Kahal, according to Boazavar Shimon, according to Boazavar Yaakov. So we answer Tashma, Kiyasar Biacha Barachena, Midaroma. Also, I see this needs to be other. Rabbi Ahabrachina from the Doroma brought a brisa, and he says, "Minayla petzua daka kohen shenasa baskerim shenachu of a truma." How do we know that a petzua daka, this kohen who has the crushed testicles, who marries a daughter of converts, he can feed her the truma? 
And he cites a verse, So we have a, we have a verse, Kohen who acquires a Kenyan Kasra, we can eat from it. So a man, so says the Gemara, according to whom, according to whom does he need this Pasek? Why do you need a Pasek to say the Kohen can feed her the Truma? If you want to say according to Rabbi Yehuda, Ha'amar, Ben B'Ktusha Saikai, Ben Rav B'Ktusha Saikai, Ho'acha, according to Rabbi Yehuda, she can never eat the Truma uh, if she was the, the if he was a Petsua Daka uh, who marries his Basque. And Rabbi Yehuda says she can never eat. And according to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says she can always eat it. Why does he need a verse? Ha'amar, Ben B'Ktusha Saikai, Ben Rav B'Ktusha Saikai, Ho'acha. We only said she can always eat it. So it must be El Rabbi Rabbi and Yaakov. It must be the verses teaching us according to Rabbi Lazar and Yaakov that she can um, uh, eat the truma and it's based upon this verse that if she was uh, a daughter of converts and marrying a Tsuadaka, that she can eat from the truma. Okay, as Gemara says, Shmamina. So we see that because even, that even since she's a daughter of converts, she has this extra Kshira to her and she's able to eat from the truma, and that is she's able to marry a Kohen from the truma. So the Mar says, Itmar, we learned Rav Amar. So now we're going to get into a dispute that's based upon the Gemara Kedushin, and this is a dispute about the concept of chuppah. Everybody knows today, chuppah, a Jewish wedding is a chuppah, but the chuppah, the concept of chuppah, what is it? We know that a person can be betrothed a woman and then marries her, but let's say they skip the betrothal part and they go straight to the chuppah. They don't do the, the Kiddush the, by saying, will you be betrothed to me with this ring? And they just do the Chuppah. So Rav Huna says that the, that the Chuppah is able to do, to make the marriage binding. That's what Rav Huna says. So, so the Chuppah is able to make the marriage binding. But let's say the Chuppah took place with a, if a disqualified marriage, like for example, a widow to a Kohen Gadol, is the chuppah still binding under those circumstances? So in my Rav Amar, Rav says we're on the top of 57B, Rav says yes, chuppah upsuos, that if it was a disqualified marriage and they went straight to chuppah and uh, he did it Petroda first and he didn't and he did it at Bia, they just said chuppah, the Rav is going to say, it's still it's still binding. And so therefore she's going to become disqualified, right? She says the answer is she's going to be disqualified if she goes back to her, her father's home. If she was the daughter of a Kohen, she can't go back and eat the chuma. She becomes disqualified just from having the chuppah. She will say, no, the chuppah is nothing. If it's a disqualified marriage, it won't disqualify her from eating the chuma. And now, so that's their dispute. And now comes along Shul and says, even though I say that there's no chuppah for psulos, and Rav says there is, Rav would agree with me that if it was an impossible marriage, and what's an impossible marriage? A girl under the age of three. I know today we are repulsed. We're saying that a girl can't have any agency to, to, to engage in marriage until she's much, much, much older. But in the Talmud, it talks about at the age of three. So, so Shmuel says on, on the Shmuel says that Rav would agree to me that if it's under three, it's not considered a chuppah at all. If the girl is under three, and that's what Shmuel says. Moyli Abba, Abba is a reference. Abba means father, but here it's a reference to Rav, who's much older. Rav would admit to me that if you have a little girl under the age of three, since there's no beer there meaning you can't consummate it, then the chuppah takes no effect. And I'm a rabbi, I'm a nami to me, no? Rabbi says, we learned this in a variety. So where did we learn this? Rabbi says, we learned this. It stated in Nida 44b, Ba'ashal Shalom Yom Echad, Miskadeshes Bibia. If she's three years old, she can become mature through Bia. Then Bala, Yavam, Kana, if the Yavam tries to do Yivam with her, he can, he can effectuate it. And she's going to be liable to him. If she's married and, and, and there's an adulterous relationship, she has li- there's liability. If a man is with her when she's in Nida, then when she's in her menstrual cycle, then he's going to make her tummy 
like then he's going to become tame like a zav. And Nisei is a kohen, and if she marries a kohen, okalas the truma. Then she could eat his truma. Vala achem kohen psul. And then if she has relations with any one of the disqualified people, uh, pasla. Like for example, if she's divorced and she marries a kohen, she's going to be disqualified. And we say bashal shalom yom echad who the nifsle the bia. If she's three years old in one day, since she becomes disqualified, but with Bia, that's where she will become disqualified from her mission. So we see that she will become disqualified in Bia, she will also become disqualified with a Chopa. And less than three years old, the woman of Bia, where she doesn't become disqualified by Bia, she's not going to become disqualified through a Chopa. If it is, if it's a case of a chupa psulos shmamina, so therefore we have a proof for that statement, right? If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to address them.